Welcome to Illuminati Silver. We tell the truth about silver. Today is Saturday the 28th of March 2020 and we're publishing our Gold and Silver Weekly Update for the week ending the 27th of March. Well, what a fascinating week we've just had. Gold rose $134 last week from 1498 to 1,633, having hit a high of 1,645 and a low of 1,484, a rise of 9%. In sterling terms, gold finished the week at £1,309, that's up £23, and in euros it closed at €1,464, that's up €72. You can see quite a disparity between the change in price between these three currencies. Up $134, up £23, and up €72. Euros. But in a nutshell, the bottom line is that compared with one another, the dollar was weakest, followed by the euro, with sterling the strongest. Not totally surprising, bearing in mind how much sterling fell the previous week and how much the dollar had risen. Silver rose $2.03 from $12.59 to $14.62, almost totally recovering the previous week's losses. Having hit a high of $14.77 and a low of $12.29. In sterling terms it closed at eleven pounds and sixty nine pence, that's up eighty eight pence, and in euros it closed at thirteen point zero seven euros, that's up one point three seven euros. The gold to silver ratio fell from one hundred nineteen to one to one hundred eleven to one. The Dow Jones closed on Friday at twenty one thousand six hundred thirty six, down nine hundred fifteen points on the day reversing three straight gains, but still managing to remain up for the week by a not inconsequential 2,463 points. The S&P 500 closed at 2,541, down 88 points on the day, but was up 237 points on the week, and the Nasdaq closed at 7,502, down 295 points on the day, but up 623 points on the week. So whilst equity markets have had, in general, a pretty dreadful time, we should consider at least that despite this, we are only looking at falls ranging from 3% for the year in the case of the Nasdaq and 16.5% in the case of the Dow. Where equity markets move from here is frankly anyone's guess that we suspect most of us who are not institutional investors are expecting further falls. Now to put it in perspective though, we draw your attention to a video we produced last night entitled US Stocks Surge, but is this a false dawn? And we've put a link to this in the description box below. Brent crude closed at $24.93 down $2.05, and WTI crude closed at $21.51, that's down $1.22 on the week. The dollar index now stands at 98.36, that's down quite an extensive 4.44 on the week. Now we commented last week, that when the dollar index stood at 102.8, which is the point at which it had closed, we stated it is, quote, beginning to look a little on the high side, even for our tastes now, unquote. So apart from an initial fall on Monday of less than $10, gold rose strongly on Tuesday, maintained its gains, peaked on Thursday, but again still managed to hold up closing just $12 short of its high for the week. We stated last week that, quote, we're not anticipating any major falls in gold and more likely a rise of some 2 to 5%, unquote. 
Now, whilst we got the trend right, we were too conservative, with gold rising in dollar terms by 9%. But interestingly, though, in sterling terms, rose by 1.8% and in euros by 5.19%. So we shall live with that. Now, on Friday, there was a little profit-taking, and we have to bear in mind that the appalling unemployment figures, or should we say unemployment benefit claims, rising to more than 3 million, certainly surprised markets. We did say last week to watch out for these jobless figures, as we did feel that they would be important. And we expected them to be poor, though, to be frank, they were even worse than our expectations. And this ensured, to some extent, that gold's rise was maintained. Now, the experience these last four weeks vis-a-vis -vis the relationship between gold and equities is an interesting one, calling into question whether gold really is a safe haven asset. Now, let's say from the start, we still believe that it is, and we believe history has shown that it is. But when one considers that as equity markets have fallen, Many investors sold their gold in order to make margin calls and in some cases cover their losses. Last week we even saw equity markets outperform gold despite terrible economic and geopolitical news, albeit only just outperforming it, admittedly. Now it does go to show how interconnected our financial services and banking markets are and we should not necessarily assume if one goes down, the other goes up. Though we will reiterate, we would prefer to hold gold at this stage than any other asset class right now. And once again, we alert you to yesterday's video, US stocks surge, but is this a false dawn? Now, from a technical trading point of view, the swing chart indicates a downward main trend while momentum is trending higher. The key levels to watch out for, which indicates a change in that main trend, is just above $1,700 on the upside, 1707 to be more precise, and just above 1450 on the downside, again 1453 being more precise. Now silver last week moved in a similar guise to gold, except a little stronger. Again, not surprising, after its gross underperformance the previous week. $15 is a major resistance level for silver, mainly because of its being a psychologically important round number. And $13 is a strong support level. The next month or two will be crucial for silver. If jobs and production figures continue to deteriorate, as we suspect they will, then we shall see more focus on silver's industrial demand forcing its price lower. Should silver actually fall again below $13 and hit $12, from a technical point of view, it could very well collapse to 11 if not even lower, perhaps bottoming at $10 an ounce. On the opposite side of the spectrum, if we can see silver reach and hold above 15 it will likely gravitate to 16, eventually in time testing an important $17 level. You see, silver met resistance just below the 20 EMA, near 1475. If silver manages to get above the 20 EMA, it will have a good chance to reach that $16 level where the 50 EMA is located. These figures aren't just guessed or plucked out of the air. Returning this precious metal to its pre-crisis levels and complete the current rebound, which we have seen occurring over the last couple of days. So, whilst we've seen silver perform percentage-wise better than gold this past week, we're not totally convinced that short-term it will continue to do so. And we may very well see a fallback in its price once again quite soon. Now, at the risk of repeating ourselves again, it's all about to what extent will the demand for silver as a monetary metal outweigh the loss in demand for silver as 
an industrial metal. Yes, the paper market is going to dominate proceedings as, let's be blunt, there's so little physical metal to be acquired right now. But nevertheless, that lack of availability is primarily the result of transport and logistics rather than the world actually running out of silver. So let us please not forget that fact. So let's now take a look at last week's economic news briefly and what we have coming down the pipeline this coming week. Well, last week's economic news was generally as per expectations, with one or two notable exceptions. February's market flash services PMI was 10 points down on January at 39.1. But the big news, as we highlighted, was the weekly jobless claims, which rose from the previous week's 282,000 which in itself was 70,000 above expectations, to 3.28 million last week. 700,000 greater than the worst forecast. An amazing figure and naturally affected markets. Now this coming week we have the following data announcements and it's pretty full. Monday we have pending home sales index for February. Tuesday, Consumer Confidence Index for March. Important, but now we get on to the very important data. On Wednesday, the ADP Employment Report for March. The Market Manufacturing PMI for March. The ISM Manufacturing Index for March. Motor Vehicle Sales for March. And Construction Spending for February. A lot of packed in there. On Thursday, the weekly jobless claims, now anticipated to rise to 4 million, the trade deficit for February and factory orders for February. And on Friday, the all-important, much-awaited non-farm payrolls for March, the unemployment rate and average hourly earnings both for March. We also have the Market Services PMI for March and the ISM Non-Manufacturing Index for March. A plethora of data, most of which is consequential. Wednesday's ADP figures will give us a guide to Friday's non-farm payrolls, plus the weekly jobless claims will undoubtedly worsen and the Friday's data will be the clincher for the week. Now, without this data being announced, we will probably have ended this video podcast by saying to expect that there will be pressure on the precious metals next week, though once again we still favour gold over the short term. We suspect silver may struggle, but if gold continues to rise, then silver will be dragged up with it. However, if the jobs reports are frightening again, even against now increased negative estimates, then this will help cause a gold rally against a falling equity market. However, there may be a time lag of a day or so before that happens. This coming week is consequential as far as silver is concerned. We have no doubt silver will eventually have its day, but we suspect not quite while the world's economies remain in the doldrums. As government spending increases and filters through the system, though, we may see a different picture emerging. Now, for those who wish to buy silver or gold and cannot obtain the physical, then we suggest you choose a company such as Bullion Vault, for example, which has a good long-term reputation and is able to conduct online transactions and money transfers. Some of our subscribers have already done this, and those that invested in silver when we highlighted the company last week will already be in profit today. We've placed a link to that company in the description box below and in the comments section, but please conduct your own research before you commit any funds. Thank you so much for listening. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to our channel and press the bell sign so that you're notified of our videos as and when they're published. Not forgetting that we update our Richard and Greg channel every other day. 
And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to that one too. We have uploaded a podcast to that channel this morning. We did attempt to do it last night, but the internet upload was so slow, it took over three hours to get 50% of that video uploaded. And it's only a 20-minute video. We gave up in the end and uploaded it this morning. We trust and hope you have an enjoyable weekend, a safe weekend, and a prosperous week ahead. We hope you have found this video interesting and informative, and if so, please give it a thumbs up and share it on social media. Please ensure that you have subscribed to our channel and press the bell sign so that you are notified of any future videos. Also kindly visit our website at IlluminatiSilver.com and if you haven't already done so, please subscribe either as a free or paying member for regular email updates and offers. Disclaimer. Illuminati Silver owners come from a background of banking, international wealth management and economics. Having now retired from these worlds, we are not qualified to give investment advice. Therefore, this and other productions must not be deemed to be giving such advice and merely represent the personal views of its owners.